It is now my sincere honor to introduce our baccalaureate speaker, Gary Enright. A Holyoke native, Gary first arrived on campus back in 1975 to pursue his undergraduate degree. In his first career, working as a teacher with troubled youth, he observed the therapeutic value counseling provided for his students. This experience inspired him to earn his master's degree in mental health counseling in 1987, also from Springfield College. He started working professionally at Springfield College in 1994 as a member of the Counseling Center. In addition to his clinical work as the Associate Director of the Counseling Center, Gary has been the longtime advisor for SAVE, Students Against Violence Everywhere, and champion for suicide prevention through both the Out of the Darkness and Into the Light events. He's also served as an adjunct instructor since 1990 with the Psychology Department. Gary's approach to working with students can best be described as positive psychology. He looks at the strengths of the students he works with, viewing them as resilient, capable, able to cope, and wanting to change, grow, and heal. In September 2019, he was awarded the Cheney Award, honoring him and his commitment to his students. In her speech at the award ceremony, President Cooper said walking into Enright's office is like a temple of a student appreciation. Walking into it, you'll find artwork, cards, tokens of appreciation, quotes, and an immediate, undeniable understanding that this individual is deeply cared for by others, and the feeling is mutual. That authenticity, care, and compassion have endeared him to generations of Springfield College. Please join me in welcoming our speaker, Gary Enright. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, when Dave McMahon first told me I was selected for this, I was very excited. That was over a month ago. And as time went on, I started becoming nervous and anxious. And right around this past Thursday, it started to disappear. I then became petrified. <laughs> so if you've never seen anyone give a speech petrified, here we go. Good afternoon to everyone. It's my privilege to be your speaker here today, especially since I was selected by students. Congratulations to all of our graduates for a job well done and welcome to the families and friends of the class of 2024. It's clear that you've achieved academic success or you wouldn't be sitting here right now. I would like to congratulate you for your hard work to get you to this moment. Mm -hmm. However, I do want to take an opportunity to honor your resilience. Your resiliency throughout the challenges, the hardships and the struggles that you may have faced along the way. Sometimes these may go unnoticed, but I'm quite sure that at least some of these have been part of your life. In my work at the Counseling Center, I have seen these firsthand. First, some challenges. Many of you were probably not only students, but also student athletes. This can be very challenging to be able to balance both major commitments. It's also difficult when your playing career may come to an end, especially since it might have been your passion since a very young age. Some of you may have uh, had your athletic career cut short due to a career-ending injury. Some of you have faced challenges experiencing a disability, often having to work harder and longer. It might have even limited your mobility as well. You may have had to develop more creative ways to meet the demands of your academic program, as well as getting your daily needs met. You might have taken, you may have had to say goodbye to lifelong friends four years ago when you first came off to NSO and began the challenge of making new friends while being out of your comfort zone of home. And for a period of time, you may have felt lost, alone, and isolated. You may have experienced feelings of homesickness due to difficulty finding your people here. Your long-term high school relationship may have ended by Thanksgiving of your first year. Some of you that are graduating this weekend may actually be only two-thirds of the way done with your academic program. 
A few years ago, you were accepted into a six-year program. This is a very challenging commitment. Many of you had to face the challenges of figuring out just who you are, especially after you thought you knew that before you got here. You might have questioned your identity regarding your sexual orientation, gender identification, or simply began to ask the question of yourself, who am I now? It might have been here that you found your first love, or you thought you did. The highs that you experienced in a new relationship might have come crashing down the moment you realized you just had your first major breakup. Some hardships. International students, you were brave enough to decide to leave your native country, learn a second language, and negotiate a very different culture to spend the next four years of your life at 263 Alden Street. Personally, over the years, I have met students from Europe, South America, Asia, and Africa. They realized when they felt alone, scared, and isolated, they were unable to go home for the weekend to be with their family for support. Many of you might have come from families that have found it financially difficult to send you off to college. Families had to make sacrifices, and I'm sure so did you. I have known students that have worked anywhere from 10 to 30 hours per week during the semester just to be able to afford to stay in school. Many of us can only imagine how difficult that might be. Struggles. Over the past four years, some of you might have struggled with the loss of a loved one. How do you grieve your loss while managing to stay on top of your academics? While any loss of a loved one can feel intense, I know students that have lost a grandparent, a childhood friend, a sibling, and even a parent. Somehow they were able to return to school. And while in a very different place psychologically and emotionally, they were still able to complete the semester as best that they could. How hard would it have been to focus when your heart has been broken? While on campus, some students might have focused on their hometowns due to a natural disaster, economic struggles, or political unrest. Somehow you were able to keep your focus here. And for the first time in the history of the world, an event that changed our lives forever happened in everyone's community. You might have heard of it. I think it was called COVID-19. Many of you might have come from families where there have been a lot of chaos, possibly due to a recent divorce, mental health concerns, or problems with substances. Our campus may have provided the support and stability that you needed at the time when you needed it the most. And last, healing. Many of you may have needed to use the support of good friends, close family members, a coach, a professor, a staff member, your partner, or a roommate. You might have utilized your natural support system to weather the storm. You might have looked around and found some good people in your life and found support just by being with someone who you knew cared about you. This kind of support can be invaluable. I know that some of you might have been deeply hurt in the past. Perhaps you utilized our counseling center. I want to recognize you as well. To get the, emotion, to get the emotional and psychological support that you were looking for, you might have needed the confidentiality and privacy that comes with a therapeutic relationship. I congratulate you for coming in to do the hard work that allowed you to continue on your path towards healing. My real life heroes are the people who were courageous enough to walk through the doors of the Springfield College Counseling Center and ask for help. It was an honor to have walked with some of you as you traveled through here on your journey. In closing, I'd like to recognize parents guardians, foster parents that might be here in attendance. You likely faced your own hardships, struggles, and challenges as well. Your healing possibly paved the way forward to ensure that your children have a better life. 
and I'm quite sure there are many grandparents here too. I want to give you a shout out for figuring out the challenging aspects of your lives. You might have set up your lives of your children and grandchildren to never have to face the obstacles that you had to overcome. And to all the seniors, while you may have thanked many people that supported you, I ask you to take a moment right now to thank yourself. This was indeed your journey. You were the one who had to keep moving forward. Your challenges, your hardships, and your struggles. When life knocked you down, you got up. So take this opportunity to appreciate that you persevered. You made it. Congratulations. <laughs>